we have an ethical and moral responsibility to use these tools wisely. Those of us, the IT professionals who do understand how these systems work, really have a responsibility to highlight problems before these systems get deployed. The data allows us to see the world in a different way. So it's down to the professional who's making sure that we build those systems in the ethical way by having a solid foundation. When I started my PhD at Imperial College, my supervisor introduced me to the field of brain-computer interfaces. Honestly, that's something that I've never heard before, and I thought it was technology far off in the future. But here, we have one of the largest computer science departments in the UK, and we are working at the forefront of this technology. For my PhD, I'm working on the intersection of machine learning and brain-computer interfaces, Doing research just for papers is one thing, but then when you see your research actually translate into the real world, that's 100% rewarding. The state of the art research and innovation that is happening here is truly going to shape our future and secure the type of social good that will benefit us all. So my PhD was enhancing human-robot interaction for safety critical environments. I had supervisors with different areas of expertise. One focused more in technology, one was human-robot interaction, and it gave me a really broad support and influence on my work. My aim is to have some sort of impact in the real world with my work and help progress the relationship between people and technology going forward. I feel so fortunate to have the opportunity to mentor the next generation of PhD students and hopefully be that role model for them. BSI has been working with Skin Analytics since 2020. We provide independent assessment of systems that Skin Analytics have in place. Skin cancer referral rates are increasing 11% year on year, with more than 600,000 patients referred last year. Early diagnosis is really important, and cancer survival rates for melanoma can be above 99% if that cancer is caught early. Our technology can be used in patient pathways to increase capacity, making sure that dermatologist's time is spent with those patients who need them most. A patient will be invited to a community hub and a series of images are taken. These include context images that provide a bit more detail around where on the body that lesion is. This combination of medical history and images are uploaded to the platform. The dermoscopic image is assessed by Derm in real time and ultimately that information is available to the next clinician in the pathway. BSI has reduced the likelihood of information security breaches. Additionally, we have established protocols for managing security risks both today and in the future. One of the projects I'm currently working on is a tool to try and help reduce uh, the prescribing of antibiotics. So it's a tool that can be used by pharmacists to go through with patients the decision-making process of why perhaps, in their circumstance, antibiotics might not be the suitable approach. Ultimately, this will have quite a significant societal impact. So here at Southampton, we pioneered what we call the person-based approach, which really puts the end user at the center of the development process. We build technology and AI and the foundations of data. But what if that data is riddled with bias? Here, we unearth these hidden stories in the code, using the lessons of the past to rewrite the future. It's about building a future where technology reflects our journey towards a more inclusive world. But what that means in reality is that we know technology reflects bias, conscious or otherwise construed in society. And we know that much of the training data sets 
of AI and machine learning, for example, contain the historic logic of society, which includes the historic bias. We have various projects, including projects which range from automation anxiety to concept analytics, to communicating climate change and to intersectional feminist approaches to technology. These projects and the other projects part that are part of the lab, they all map and address the societal challenges which we face. In 2019, I came to Belfast to do a PhD in computer science. Queen's University academic reputation made me come here. Being part of this city and how it's shaping the future of tech, that's what keeps me here. Feel part of wider community, working on projects that solve real world problems. Because of my past and present research, future looks bright for me. You only have to open a newspaper or turn on the TV and you'll see people talking about artificial intelligence, about generative AI, about that exciting future. But that future is being forged by a minority perspective. There are data sets that don't represent a bulk of humanity. There are systems that are producing outputs that don't reflect the lived experience of everyday people. So right now, we're working with communities around the world to ensure that that artificial intelligence does what it should do. And that is to serve us, the natural intelligences. Because regardless of what people say in those big companies, the most important technology of all is you and me.